Ladies and gentlemen, dear guests here at the Aedes Metropolitan Laboratory in Berlin and out there joining us outline. A very warm welcome to the first international conference within the framework of the Sino-German Research and Development Project Urban Rural Assembly. This is the point of departure towards a global exploration of the political, ecological, and social relevance of integrated approaches in urban, rural planning and governance. A collaboration of the Technical University Berlin, Tongji University from Shanghai, and the International Building Exhibition in Thuringia. Why our Aedes Metropolitan Laboratory as a cultural platform serves as a host for this conference series, I will explain in a few minutes, seconds. Let me also in the name of my partner, Christine Feireis and our entire team of the ANCB, welcome first the initiators and speakers of the today's conference. Professor Dr. Philip Misselwitz, Chair of Habitat Unit, Department for International Urbanism and Design at the Technical University in Berlin. Professor Dr. Gri King, Ji Qing Yang, CAUP from Tongji University in Shanghai. Susanna Karavansky, Secret Secretary of State, Ministry of Infrastructure and Agriculture, Free State of Thuringia through video statement from Erfurt, as well as for the responding statements Angela Penagos, director of RIM ISP Colombia, Centro Latino Americano para del Desarrollo Rural in Bogota. Professor Dr. Chao Min, honorary professor in urban planning at Tongji University. And Dr. Marta de la Besardi, managing director of the International Building Exhibition Turingia. Hannes Langut, researcher at Habitat Unit, Department for International Urbanism and Design at Technical University in Berlin. And as for the key lecture, Dr. Remy Sitchiping, Chief of Policy, Legislation and Government Section at UN Habitat in Nairobi. It's really nice, Remy, that you will join us here again. The Aedes Metropolitan Laboratory was founded as a knowledge and exchange hub between the international universities and the other, many other agencies and entities who are in the architecture and spatial design. At this cultural and transdisciplinary interface between the expert groups, we try to find a common language to explore opportunities for the betterment of the living environment and instigate a broader discourse with the citizens and the public. Usually, this discourse is held in the urban context. Our age of urbanization has focused primarily on the city inhabitants, while developments in rural areas drifted into the background. Since we learned that more than half of the world's population is currently living in the cities, and it's expected to increase to 66% by 2050, we neglected the fact that the other almost half of the population is still living on the countryside and deserves equal opportunities for prosperity and well-being. Challenges faced by rural populations as well as the loss of cultural and biological diversity is common to the many regions and countries around the world. Thus, rethinking strategies for the neglected hinterland is a critical global issue today, as places outside the cities unite communities and individuals through meanings assigned to their built and natural landscapes. This is why, five years ago, we have initiated the Regions on the Rise program at the ANCB. From local explorations and workshops around Berlin, through collaborations with European universities and municipalities, the, the subject led us soon to China, where we have identified the Songyang region as an interested field of research. Even if not all what we have seen and experienced is one-to-one -one applicable here, we can learn from China. In 2018, we organized an international conference in Songyang 
as of a broader introduction into the global discourse while giving the participants who came from around the world the opportunity to experience architectural acupuncture the Beijing architect Xu Tiantian and Songyang government applied in that region as a successful method to improve rural development. It was through Remy Xi Jinping, with whom we had already a number of collaborations here in Berlin, we invited him as well to join the conference in Songyang. With him, we got more and more focused on the importance on the urban-rural linkage. Today, for us, this exciting collaboration is a great opportunity to look again into the development of the rural regions in China. Under this more specific aspect of the connectivity between the metropolitan areas and the countryside, I am sure we will find a rich source of information and experiences to share. It is of great interest and pleasure to follow this collective Sino-German research, and we are glad to cooperate again with our friends from Tongji, and we wish the re results to present again in an ex successful exhibition here at Aedes in a few years. Thank you, Philip. Thank you very much, Hans-Jürgen, Hans um, for being a generous and brilliant host here at Aedes Gallery in Berlin. Um, my name is Philip Mislowitz. Uh, I'm one of the PIs in this project, um, Rural Assembly, within which uh, this conference will take place. Um, my colleagues, many of my colleagues here uh, joined us um, at Aedes Gallery uh, live, um, <clears throat> but uh, we have also many participants um, uh, joining uh, via Zoom uh, from different parts of the world, um, from Nairobi, from Beijing, Shanghai, uh, Taishu region, and uh, other parts. So um, uh, it's a bit of a technical challenge, which I'm sure we manage uh, brilliantly, but I would like to thank right from the outset this fantastic team here that makes this uh, hybrid conference uh, possible. Um, Hans-Jürgen already introduced um, the main topic of this uh, conference, um, I would like to only add that um, really for this introductory session, we would like to take um, a, a global discussion, a global perspective, as it were, a stock taking of how urban rural linkages in different regions of the world are being discussed as a key sustainability challenge. Um, uh, uh, several contributions will introduce us to the situation in China uh, and also Germany, but we also have um, um, a Latin American perspective um, so, <clears throat> within this kind of, um, taking this kind of global horizon, uh, we would like to explore what research tools and interdisciplinary research alliances are needed to build a better knowledge base on urban rural transformation challenges. How can we overcome the gap between research policy and practice? How can transdisciplinary science policy interfaces lead to more effective action? Um, in order to help us thinking through these questions, um, we have a really exciting program, um, quite dense. Um, I would like to give a quick overview of what uh, 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 will happen now in the next uh, couple of hours. Uh, first, we will begin with two uh, official statements. Um, one statement uh, from a representative of uh, the Taishou uh, local government in China. Um, our hosts, as it were, for this uh, Sino-German uh, research project in China, followed by an official statement uh, by Susanna uh, Karavansky, the Secretary of State um, of the Free State of uh, Thuringia. Um, after these official statements, we will come to a keynote lecture, um, already mentioned by Hans-Jürgen, uh, Dr. Remy Xi Jinping um, will uh, give us a global overview um, and um, by the way, I will introduce each uh, speaker um, immediately before I will call them up um, in more detail, but uh, this is the keynote lecture, um, followed by three responses, um, one from Colombia, one from uh, China, and one from Thuringia. And um, as a last uh, contribution to this session, we will hear from my colleague Hans Langut uh, more specifically on our research project, um, Urban Rural Assembly, um, before uh, then ending up with um, a roundtable discussion. Um, a few notes on housekeeping. Um, we, we are not able to uh, 
have uh, a Q&A session after each contribution. So please, um, as we go through these uh, really rich and exciting contributions, uh, uh, you are free to type comments or questions into the chat. Uh, but um, if you want to uh, speak uh, in person um, uh, to one of these uh, contributors, please remember this question carefully. Um, when, it, when we come to the roundtable discussion and Q&A session at the end, you'll be able to raise your hand um, um, through the Zoom program um, or here live in the room, um, and we will call you up um, and uh, hopefully uh, have a very interesting uh, discussion. So uh, without further ado, I would like to um, call up my uh, colleague and uh, Chinese PI in, um, in the Urban Rural Assembly project, uh, Professor Dr. Guiqing Yang, who will um, co-moderate this session with me uh, today. Um, Guiqing Yang is um, a professor at Chongqing University in Shanghai and also the head of the urban planning department uh, at the School of Architecture and Urban Planning. Um, and um, Guiqing Yang, I hope uh, you can hear me and um, take over. Uh, there you are. Um, and um, introduce also the official statement from China. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Philip. Uh, I think it's uh, now it's my honor to um, invite Mr. Zhou Xianmiao Zhu Ren uh, from Taizhou Municipal Government on behalf of uh, Taizhou Municipal Government, uh, Zhejiang Province, uh, to give a speech, uh, or to uh, welcome speech. Thank you very much. Uh, 接下来，我非常荣幸地邀请啊，呃，台州市呃人大常委会呃副院长呃人大常委会副主任呃周先苗。It's a it's a great honor for me to give the floor to uh Mr. Zhou Xianmiao for the opening remarks. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, scholars, specialists. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, in 2020, we are under a severe challenge imposed by COVID-19. Uh, despite the COVID situation, we are holding uh, today's uh, a seminar in, in, a, in this virtual way on behalf of the uh, mayor and the municipal government uh, and, and, and the uh, hydro government, I would like to express our sincere gratitude and to all of you for participating in this event. Taizhou enjoys a very advantageous location. It has a very prosperous market. It is also a pioneer in reform and opening up as well as the uh, private uh, uh, privately owned uh, businesses. It also has great natural environment. Uh, it is very close to major Yangtze River Delta metropolitans. Since the beginning of this year, Taizhou has accelerated its cooperation with academic institutions at home and abroad to promote the, uh, the integrated development. Uh, since 2002, Huang Yan uh, has been in close cooperation with Tongji University. The cooperation has been expanding uh, since then. It started from the beautiful village planning project and later on expanded into uh, a, a comprehensive project that covers even an, an educational uh, act Academy. It provides intellectual support to policy making as well as uh, education in urban planning. And now the Academy has become an important uh, name card of Huang Yan District. We have received over 488 delegations. Altogether, thir over 13,000 people have visited Huang Yan District, and there have been training sessions held uh, for over 6,000 people regarding the topic of urban planning, policy making, and integrated urban rural development, etc. And 
such cooperation also yielded a very valuable experience. We have summarized from our past research and the partnership, the effective ways to uh, achieve integrated and coordinated urban rural development. And such experience uh, has been put into um, research uh, articles which have been released on major national journals. Um, Huang Yan is now also uh, enlisted in the Yangtze River Delta um, beautiful village pilot uh, cities. Among other 10 cities and districts. These experience accumulated in Huang Yan is also circulated in the Central Party Committee uh, working group on urban and rural uh, development. And now, as we are more than ready to further promote the integrated urban rural development, and that is also why we are holding this event to learn uh, the rich experience from our German friends. Although we cannot meet each other face to face to date, I do believe that our discussion can still uh, produce a very uh, fruitful results so that more villages can benefit uh, from our uh, discussion. I want to take this opportunity too to extend our invitations to all of you to come to uh, Huang Yan sometime in the future and witness the development results. And finally, I want to wish the event full success. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Zhou, for the statement. Uh, I would want to thank Taizhou uh, government for for providing such a platform uh, for our Sino-German uh, cooperation. This is a very valuable platform for our research in URA. Um, and next I'll give the, uh, give the microphone back to Professor Philip. Yes, thank you very much. Um, we will now have another statement um, which has been pre-recorded uh, by uh, Susanna Karwanski, who is the Secretary of State at the Ministry of Infrastructure and Agriculture of the Free State of Thuringia in Germany, our partner region in this project. And um, I will start the statement now. Ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome from lovely Thuringia, and as I can see, to the whole world. Sorry for not being personally here with you, and sorry for not personally welcoming you, but this digital communication allows us to overcome time and space. I would like to especially welcome the official representatives from Huangjiang and Teju, Mr. Xi Jinping from Nairobi and the high ranking and all participants from planning and regional development, both in theory and practice. Many thanks in advance for your commitment. I think we are together searching for new ways in the relationship between urbanity and countryside. For the Thuringian perspective and regional politics, I can say this is a very big issue and a very great concern for us. For sure, China and Germany may seem to be extremely different, and the region of Huangjiang Tezhou may have a quite different perspective than Thuringia. But we all experience the effects of global change processes, such as migrations, the questions of using our natural resources in the future, the climate change, which is a matter of concern for all of us, the pandemic situation, of course, and much more. All these questions cannot be answered by one region separately. We need to observe and discuss them in a global context. And as a State Secretary for Infrastructure in Thuringia, I have some urgent issues, such as 
how do we actually organize in future mobility in urban and rural areas? How can we assure healthy living conditions everywhere? Will the population in small communities have a sufficient supply with public goods and services in future too, knowing about the demographic transitions we state right now? Even in the moderate scale of Turingia, we experience that the cities are mostly attractive for younger people and the cities are growing and the rural areas threaten to shrink and aging. And I am very much interested in elaborating innovative governance structures in the relations between town, urban, urbanity and countryside, which are economically re reasonable, ecologically sustainable and more equitable in social aspects. I am very pleased that you have come here and have a look at Turingia. This is surely due to the fact that Turingia as a federal state is a prime example for rurality. This is connected here with a long and positive collective experience that rural life could have advantages too. A rich cultural landscape and variety of urban planning situations and life opportuni opportunities and a relatively high density of infrastructures. In the rural area, there could be progress too. I have a look at Weimar, the city of classics or the Bauhaus, which was founded in Weimar too. And that you come here has certainly something to do with the IBA Turingia. For several years, it has been working on new projects and processes in the urban rural context. The Ministry for Infrastructure and Agriculture is in regular contact with the IBA, especially with Minister Professor Hoff, who asked me to convey his best regards to all of you today. Thanks to our good relation to the IBA, we will get informed of the results of your conference today. I wish you a great conference and many success. Take care and bye-bye. Yeah, um, I think these two opening statements um, convey really the spirit of uh, the Urban Rural Assembly Project and also this conference to establish um, a learning process um, across very different geographies uh, around the world, um, which face um, similar but also distinct uh, challenges uh, around urban, rural, urban and rural um, issues. Um, and, um, but in order to, uh, to give you a sort of a global introduction and perspective, um, we are very, very pleased to um, have persuaded uh, Dr. Remy Xi Jinping uh, to come and deliver a keynote to us. Um, he is um, a very busy man, I should say. He uh, is uh, currently the chief of the policy, legislation, and governance section at UN Habitat in Nairobi, uh, from which uh, he will join us. Um, <coughs> but he is also wonderfully approachable and spontaneous. And when I met him at the, urban, the World Urban Forum in Abu Dhabi in January, um, uh, early February at the time when we could still travel, um, he was uh, immediately um, uh, enthusiastic about our project. And uh, in fact, when Habitat, um, through the link um, with Remy and his team, um, has now become an official partner in the Urban Rural Assembly Project. So um, Remy, I hope you can Hear me, and uh, you are ready I to. I can hear you, Philip. I can hear Great. You. So I would like to give you the floor, or the digital space, uh, to deliver our keynote. Thank you. Oh, thanks a lot, Philip. I wouldn't miss this uh, opportunity for anything. Um, so, uh, and that for several reasons. Not that uh, this is a very great venture that uh, is uh, touching on a topic that uh, is close to my heart about rural linkages, but also because I have great people around me. Uh, not only uh, Hans Jürgen, Christine, which uh, really are passionate about these things, passionate about China, passionate about the transformation, and are always out there for you know cutting edge ideas. So I always look up to Ades, to Christine, and. Uh, uh, Hans Hergen to, you know, for ideas to, to advance the, the work we are doing. So I'm, I'm very pleased to be here and um, 
some of the one of those countries that is also very close to this topic we already mentioned china is colombia so i'm pleased that uh, you're gonna get some perspective from there germany had been at the forefront so in my conversation with you this uh, afternoon i would like to to bring to you a, a little bit our journey some of the things we have picked along the way um, and we have a, a growing team. I think in the room we have uh, Camilo that uh, some of you have met and Rosanna. We have uh, a team back here in Nairobi, Grace, Elle and other who are supporting this program. So I would like to uh, appreciate everyone who um, has spoken before. Uh, and if uh, you may allow me, I could share, uh, we prepare um, uh, a presentation, maybe just to guide a little bit our conversation here. Maybe that would help us having a more uh, interesting perspective rather than listening to me. You can also complement that with uh, some visual aspects. So I've been asked to, to talk a little bit on the global perspective and some elements of governance and policies as well that uh, I'm now uh, trying to support but also looking at the, the context we are operating in, uh, what the, the say the COVID-19 had brought into this topic. And I was very uh, pleased that the issue of uh, how, what type of governance system can you bring uh, on the table now in the context of uh, strengthening urban rural linkages. So in the conversation, um, I will just remind ourselves of some of the issues, some of the things that we, we already know, but always important to, to recall uh, how the dynamics, the settlement dynamics have been going and some very much important areas to what we can do to strengthen the, the rapport between urban and rural. Then what UN Habitat have been doing, some of the instruments we have in place, what does it mean for the global discourse from the sustainable development goals to the new urban agenda, to the LAPSI chapters and so forth, what does it mean? And then what, um, what are the, the critical entry points for policy, legislation, and governance? And I, I'm presenting this, uh, call, um, taking note of what uh, Philip had just mentioned in the, the connection between research policy, practice, and action. Uh, so I will also touch on that and give you, uh, so that it's not too dry, uh, some example that you have been collecting or engaging with so that you, you have a flavor of how it works just to give you an idea that this is possible and this is working in some context. And to finish off, what does uh, you know, COVID-19 means to us? What does it mean for the, those, the champions of urban rural linkages? What does it mean for our new normal when you have to strengthen the link between urban and rural? So we already heard from Hans Jürgen of uh, the, the dynamics of, of the urban transformation versus rural, but the idea here is how do we bring both together in terms of uh, what you may call burden and benefits? How do we share those? So this transformation had been ongoing. Um, we don't have to go into the detail, but what we have to just realize here is that uh, has somehow been constant from the 1990s, the share of, in terms of population that lives in a specific territory that could be qualified say, as urban, rural, and other, have been somehow constant in terms of percentage. The volume, of course, has changed. That's where the dynamics is. I know that in some countries, there are specificities, as we have heard from the Secretary of Turinga, that um, at time, it's really about uh, shrinking rural areas. But we also have, in some contexts, where we have uh, what you call um, a sea wave or a tree wave, where people are moving more into rural areas. Uh, the example from uh, Switzerland, for instance, where people are more inclined to settle in smaller and rural areas. So this trend had been ongoing. How do we manage that so that there's more win-win situation? That's where uh, we are trying to, to, to bring these elements of uh, you know, leveling the field, making sure that there's uh, uh, no space is left behind as no one is, should be left behind. So our uh, motto, when, for anyone working on urban rural linkages is that there should be no space, small, rural, urban, peri-urban, or however you're gonna qualify it, that should be neglected. And that's why I'm so passionate about this because it's, uh, for me, it's so powerful than just leaving no one behind because space matters. 
Um, so why is this so important? Uh, because if you look at the settlement patterns, what you may call urban usually occupies usually uh, the, the smaller portion of uh, the land surface, but it, it relies on some and the larger territory to really be able to sustain itself. So because of the concentration of uh, human in one space, but in the consumption of um, natural resources go, it usually goes beyond that. So it's very important that we understand that. And um, human being by nature had to move across territory beyond urban, beyond nation, beyond uh, continents. So that movement is always critical and we cannot stop it. We have to know that when people are moving, they just don't cut the links. They keep the relationship with that territory and wherever they have, they have uh, crossed, the trajectory is still part of what makes them and they always leave footprint. Meaning that there's no, technically no cut, no um, a clear distinction you can actually uh, consider as an island in a human being or human trajectory. But that dynamics uh, had to always be nurtured in such a way that it could just be, not be one way, but both ways. That it can go towards urban, it can go to rural. As we have seen, I will touch on that later on in the context of COVID, when those who are high heat in urban areas, some have to move back to their trajectory next town of the village and so forth. So this is happening. And uh, there's no better example as China in terms of the transformation and how urbanization had brought in uh, some benefits in maybe taking more people out of poverty, but they have realized that rural area is really the, the heart or even the, the, the lungs of the, uh, the urban. So that's why uh, the rural uh, dynamics, the revitalization of rural areas in terms of culture, heritage, natural, are so critical. So this is a reminder to anyone who is doubting that um, we have to nurture the links between the territory or across the territory is very important. And you have noticed that I've been using territory a lot because uh, for us, the territorial approach is so powerful because it doesn't distinguish between urban and rural in particular. So that we use that one to, 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 to better articulate that issue. Um, one thing that also cuts across, help us cut across that uh, dichotomy is the climate change. It doesn't know urban, it doesn't know rural, either in terms of the receiving or uh, emitting, if it's poorly managed. So when you start talking about climate, if also it can manifest itself to a certain degree in terms of magnitude in different uh, different settlements, uh, but the fact is that is the whole world. When you have drought, uh, in say uh, it affects the whole, or you call it um, a heat wave in cities. But for a farmer, that's drought, for instance. Uh, so it's the same similar thing that but that affects the whole territory. Same for the the say the the pandemic we had now, though it's concentrated in cities, but the impact is felt across. And I will touch on that later on. Now, uh, we all know that uh, we are becoming a consuming uh, society, what we call consumerism. Uh, and that consumption usually uh, goes into what you call perhaps the a system of production, consumption, waste, and so forth, recycling. And this cuts again across the territory. Because when you look at where the, where the what is consumed, comes from, it might be coming from Vietnam, it goes through a territory, it's uh, maybe uh, transformed or uh, used somewhere in, uh, I don't know, in Qatar or somewhere, uh, then by people who are across that territory. So that consumption is very important. So the third thing that comes into mind that really uh, um, embody the element of urban ruling kitchen, apart from climate change, pandemics, is food, food and nutrition. When you see what you are eating, it has gone through a territory that links urban and rural. You can't have what you are having on your plate if you cannot connect to a territory that is beyond urban or beyond the, the, um, the rural area. So food and nutrition is also a, a very powerful image 
of how we have to make sure that we protect that territory. Uh, let me now move to uh, the fourth element, if you wish, the biodiversity. We know that for those who consume, say, honey, uh, honey is very important, but it needs a certain element within the territory to make you in a city to put that in your tea or coffee. So biodiversity loss has that impact across the territory as well. And if you, you feel that you are um, out of that business, you'll be hit hard in terms of the quality of uh, your honey or quality of your, the environment or the flower or other things, or uh, the fruits that might not have the, the quality or that's why issues of um, uh, say um, uh, organic food becomes so critical because we have lost, because we want to enhance so much that we are losing the biodiversity. This can go into the animal the, and other things. But that narrative is also very important to understand that urban and rural had to be, uh, you know, interwoven in any way we, we engage. So uh, just to recap some of the points, food, uh, food nutrition is a very good uh, entry point, and we have been using that uh, to, to, to um, articulate, to advance this particular agenda. The second one is on the governance. Because when you, you have in a gov, I think in China, you have this very good example where you have a ministry in charge of urban and rural. In many countries, uh, sectorally, it makes it a bit harder in terms of how do you gov uh, governance that. The second um, instrument in terms of governance is uh, 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 some countries have been quite fortunate to put in place what they call um, uh, maybe a ministry or a government department in charge of territorial development. That had also helped build that. Um, link. If you go to now services and infrastructure, you can use that as well to make sure that you, you make seamless link between urban and rural to make sure that because urban rural linkages are basically about the flow, seamless flow of people, goods, services, technology, and so forth. Uh, you can put, uh, I don't know, RCT infrastructure, you can put uh, road, you can put uh, highways, you can put anything, but to ensure that the, uh, people move in terms of migration back and forth because one way would not help and that you create conditions for innovation as you have seen in the context of the pandemic uh, of COVID-19 that uh, the information technology RCT had been really a critical uh, instrument to enable uh, you know other contact tracing or other uh, responses so this is very more important and this goes beyond urban it cuts across uh, any territory. So uh, now looking very much at um, the, some of the global agenda to say that you are fully supported uh, by, so, back up by a strong agenda uh, at the uh, international level is that back to the Rio plus 20, it was very clear that this issue of uh, say biodiversity conservation uh, were key to make sure that rural areas are, are taken care of, um, that urbanization is not having a negative uh, impact to other territories, for instance. Um, later on in the SDGs were very clear, and that's why it was made uh, crisply clear, uh, that uh, that connection had to be to link the three pillar of any sustainable development, which is social, economic, and environmental, and that it should be in the context of bringing urban, peri-urban and rural areas together for a development that can be considered sustainable. So three key messages here. First is that it should be positive, positive interaction between economic, social and environment. And uh, the, um, then the, the issue of linking, ensuring that no peri-urban, no rural, no uh, uh, urban areas are left behind that their links are strengthened and that is uh, mutually beneficial. So that's very clear. Again, in the SDGs, there are, uh, as you know, the sustainable development goals are um, reinforcing each other. So as you read through, they make sense. And I'll show you some example how we have been using that in um, better articulating the importance of uh, uh, taking care of our, the whole territory, not just a few, uh, some uh, uh, pockets. 
Um, further, in 2016, the new urban agenda put that emphasis uh, squarely on the table in the context of urban development, which urban development will not be limited to city development, but to a, a, a process of transformation of human settlements that will benefit everyone, including in rural areas. So that's had to be very clear that the new urban agenda is not only about an agenda to, for urban, it's about an, an agenda for the urbanization, for the transformation that will benefit every, everyone and every uh, territory. Uh, so to, to support this type of uh, engagement and help um, uh, the constituency interested in this topic to, to have some um, references to work with, we have started uh, just before when the discussion, as some of you were aware in the new urban agenda, uh, the preparation of the habitat tree, there was an issue paper on the urban rural linkages where the expert agreed to develop um, some guiding principles. So just before the agenda was adopted, uh, partners got together and said, let's develop uh, some guiding framework or guiding principle, uh, but actionable that will help us move this agenda forward. So from 2015 or uh, 14, 15 uh, or so, we start putting together a process together that uh, brought ultimately uh, over 130 partners as um, uh, stakeholders together, 40 or so organizations that um, they discuss over a period of uh, three years or so and come up with 10 principles and 11 actions to support the, that link between the territory, um, across the territory. And um, uh, further, uh, the other important thing I want to mention here is that um, UN Habitat for, for the first time uh, in 2019 convened all member states of the United Nations and they agree as one of the key resolutions out of the five on urban rural linkages. That was one, one out of the, the two substantive um, uh, resolutions that ask UN Habitat to invest and work with partners uh, like you guys to, to really advance this topic. So we have been busy doing, um, doing just that uh, in many ways, as you have seen in the engagement we have had uh, you know, throughout and recently. So for those who have not uh, had the chance to look at the guiding principle, I would really, really recommend that. That will help us a lot, especially in this context of the, the urban rural assembly, and Philip uh, is quite aware of this. Um, so they are very much, um, uh, I would say, encompassing. So I will encourage you, I will not go into detail, but there's no uh, aspect that have been left uh, unattended. Uh, but more interestingly, it's not just coming up with a wishy, wishy uh, principle, but to have actions. What can I do? What can you do? And that's the, the most interesting part. That turns the principle into actions. And they are supported with some, each, each um, principle has a set of principle to support that with different actors. Um, then we have, as I said earlier, we mapped that across um, the, the SDGs. If you look at uh, the urban rural linkages in the middle, you look at the, the 17 goals or the goals, the key goals that you have in the, uh, the SDGs and where are they mapping in the outer ring into the, the principles. You can see it's supporting different principles we have in the in the guiding in the guiding principle. So the connection is drawn from that, and therefore becomes an instrument to operationalize the, the sustainable development goals. We have done the same for the um, for the new urban agenda. But let me just move uh, to to uh, give you a, a few ideas on how policy and legislation, as well as governance, could support. Uh, making urban rural linkages uh, reality. Uh, I will show some example to that. Uh, and we are doing so because in the, one of the key principles or the first principle in the in the, um, uh, the principle that uh, partners had agreed of are really about governance and legislation and uh, as well as policy. So is to make that work. Why? Because is creating the the environment, the conducive environment to work. Without a proper structure in terms of governance, without a clear 
uh, distribution of roles and responsibilities that can be tracked through legislation or through clear, uh, I, I would say, prescription that you have found in policies. It, it's impossible. It would be very patchy to try to address that. So that's why policy governance and legislation become so key because it gives clarity, it gives visibility, it gives um, predictability in our action when we engage with uh, governance. And uh, I may give some example later, but just hint now that in our case, we have developed, for instance, how do you make sure that your policy is urban ruling cages proof? Without that, you can't really tell if indeed the policy is helping or undermining your urban ruling cages. So having that predictability in your policy frameworks are essential uh, for those who would like to operate that. Uh, one of the reasons is really because policy governance and other is really putting actors together because you heard earlier the issue of cooperation because without ensuring that urban and rural actors are engaging in a certain discussion or looking in the same direction you can't have a territorial approach right so uh, that's the second reason why policy governance are, and, uh, and legislation are key because it defines the role and how you can work together to make that happen. Uh, the, the third element, which is always uh, critical when we, we talk about decentralization, how do we work at multi-scale, multi-level, is what, are, what am I gaining out of this? So we have to define clear benefit that we have in cooperating. So that's why the issue of incentive becomes uh, very important. Then the, the financial instruments that you can use to to foster, to promote a territorial approach, to promote, um, you know, uh, taking, um, you know, benefiting both urban and rural are uh, so critical uh, in that sense. Uh, if you want to know uh, a bit further, is really about knowing the gaps. That's one of the areas that is um, have been studied again and again. We try to understand what is missing in rural areas that urban have. So we can find the gap and try to see how you can level that. And the governance can give you instrument or give you reasons why you can, you have to do so. But if you start thinking in terms of continuum, then that start making a huge difference. And then you should, uh, if every sector we see itself playing out across uh, urban, rural and peri-urban areas. But to make that work, you have to be able to put your finger and say, I'm saying so because this is the evidence. So that's why indicators become so critical. Having the evidence to demonstrate that the, the, the links between urban and rural um, are weak or, or, or strong, you need indicators. So it's very critical. And I'm very pleased here that, uh, you know, the University Tongji, Technical University of Berlin and others are in that research and look into that uh, interface between policy, uh, between research policy, action and practice because research that evidence that body of evidence is really key, key to advance this so this these are some of the things that are important and this research will also inform um, what you may call um, sens sensible governance uh, policy on or legislation because they should not be just based on wills but they should be based on facts on evidence on um, things that are uh, uh, as stronger can be pr proven. So the other instrument that we feel is very important is a platform for advocacy, communication, and outreach. And for us, uh, we are very pleased here, and thanks to um, Hans Jürgen and others for introducing us to Songyang, which we found fascinating, fascinating. But there are many other cases like that in China. So through that uh, collaboration, we had uh, the first international forum on urban rural linkages, and this comes uh, the same way as your this platform for urban rural assembly to bring together not only the the usual suspect, those who are already convinced about this, but bring together those who are at the fringe, because we are urban rural linkages have to be encompassing. So we have we are set up that platform of the urban rural linkages. Uh, uh, you know, forum to bring the, the partners together. The second one will be next year, 
we are thinking about that. We have uh, some instruments to last with those who are interested in the topic, newsletters that we produce. We have we contribute uh, to different uh, global reports, including the, the recent um, African Green Re Revolution um, uh, report uh, 2020 on that. We have a series of webinars that we have run through this and so forth. So any suites, any range of instruments we can use to advance this is very important. It's not obvious. So we have to, uh, and I'm pleased that we are working with Philip on these things to keep uh, advancing this uh, topic. So for those who are interested, there are some uh, uh, immediate events uh, coming up during the Urban October, which is one of our, uh, I would say, holy month at UN Habitat. We have a series of uh, activities that we have planned and they, they will be uh, part of that uh, advocacy that we want to bring into the the urban, very much urban constituency, but to bring out the rural dimension of that. Uh, we are also engaging with um, Secretary General uh, United Nations Food uh, System Summit that they are planning in 2021 to, to bring, um, you know, these elements of linkages rather than division in the discourse. But there are many other fora that uh, you can look into um, uh, to advance. We can't do this without funding. Uh, this is critical, and we are very pleased that the, the federal government in Germany had understood the importance of uh, urban rolling cages. From our side, we have been advancing this program through the support of the United Nations, uh, what we call the development account, as a means to implement the sustainable development goals, where we have programs in four countries. We have uh, the government of Spain. Uh, through the, um, the Catalonia and the uh, Andalusia agent, development agencies who have been supporting us to, to bring these things into, um, into life, into practical programs, projects, and interventions to uh, reduce that uh, divide. Uh, we, had also had a pro we also had a project in Bolivia where we used uh, funding from the government of Sweden to, to bring that at the policy making uh, level. So uh, a range of uh, interventions, but we are just a small player. We are just enabler. Many are doing more, maybe, maybe better job than us. And we, we are always keen to, to join hands, to support this, to make this um, uh, very important critical issue um, still top on the agenda. So uh, for those who are still doubting to, to understand what, what's happening, what other countries have done, I, going to touch, about, touch on a few examples, maybe that will inspire you, maybe not copy and paste, but give you an idea of how they have been doing. Um, for each case, I will give you not only the country and so forth, but also the entry point, because uh, urban rolling cages had many, uh, it doesn't matter where you are, you can still make a difference. So in, the, in this case, uh, in Botswana, they use the territorial planning as an instrument to bring together people in urban and rural together to map out the, the, the type of uh, network system that they had there to, to bring, uh, you know, as I said earlier, the, the three pillar of sustainable development uh, together, social, economic, and environment in the context of making that territory more resilient and make sure that the weakest links are, are reinforced. Could be uh, the household, could be at the the small producers and so forth, those who are at the fringe. So when you, you do that, then you can try to now reduce the discrepancy you find in, um, in your territory. So that the case of Botswana, by the way, we have a compendium of cases where all these are further developed, are further expanded for those who are there to know. You can do that through infrastructure, in this case in Cameroon, where they, they use road infrastructure to connect urban uh, and uh, its territory and uh, the other uh, places, and through that unlock a potential for trade, for uh, you know, commerce and uh, some services like uh, education, health, and so forth. So that's another instrument entry point that you could use. Uh, you can use the finance instruments like um, they have done in Nepal to bring not only the partnership uh, to play, but bring. Uh, some capacity development within the, the framework of that financing and ensure that the political will 
is somehow um, facilitated through that process. So that's, again, another entry point through finance, you can reach out on capacity development, on, on um, engaging the, uh, the politicians and so forth. So uh, it's doable. Uh, uh, um, urban ruling cages is above all cooperation. If you don't, you can't bring uh, everyone together. If you cannot uh, trust each other, it becomes difficult. So uh, in this case, we feel that through the cooperation, you can enhance the capacity of uh, each party to understand, to see the, to look from the win-win uh, side, either in terms of city or city to rural uh, um, uh, cooperation. We have seen that in China where the uh, people in rural areas, um, urban areas go to rural for their practices. This type of things help. Uh, the, if you are in a government or in a institution, a whole of a government or institution approach helps because you see different perspectives uh, as well. Uh, and you can do, we mentioned also uh, already the, the importance of incentive. If I don't see the benefits, if I don't see what I'm gaining out of this, it's very difficult to, to engage meaningfully. So we always uh, try to bring out the benefit that um, the cooperation or the engagement will, uh, will bring. Uh, now to finish off, just to again contextualize further into our, uh, you know, what we are going through uh, now, the COVID-19, what does it mean for urban rolling cages? Here to say, for us, we have uh, start we are not quite sure how that means for urban rural cages, but when we start opening up and have a, a conversation through the series of webinars we run, we realize that, I will show you some results later, but some that came up were about migration because urban rural cages, as I said, it's about flow, how people move. So the case of India had been on the, the media, so that's why we put it here so that you, you know the issue of flow or, or, or food was there. Uh, that's why we have the case of uh, Montreal, for instance. There have been other uh, instruments that came up to play to, to see now how do we map uh, the cash transfer, for instance, uh, to those who are falling. And they, um, especially in, uh, uh, you know, deprived neighborhoods or deprived areas in rural areas, how do you support that? How do you make sure that uh, some countries have been very um, noticed earlier that if there's a limitation in movement, there should not be limitation in goods, for instance, that had helped uh, in a way. So uh, they realize that we are so interconnected that we cannot completely be the linked to our rural areas um, for those who are in cities, even if the cases, more cases are in cities, but rural areas that were uh, somehow facilitated in making this, these things work. So just to give you an, incentive, um, an idea of key, key lessons or key entry points in terms of COVID-19, that talks directly to the urban rural linkages uh, dialogue is the issue of food security and nutrition. So critical, it cuts across uh, urban and rural and very in, uh, important, interesting entry point that um, had come to fore. Uh, the issue of digital divide. You know, I don't know about Germany, but I know in, in many countries, those who have been asked to work from home to be connected, to pay through, uh, I don't know, digital means, that's where you see that rural areas have to be boosted, for instance, to ensure that they, they, they can respond to that uh, type of policy directives. So that has shown that gap, and some countries are now are going into ensuring that there is, um, I would say, digital uh, um, uh, internet uh, justice somehow uh, across the territory. The issue of small town and rural development have come very much at the, the forefront. And if uh, you look at the recent report of the World Bank on that one in context of COVID, it becomes so critical in terms of how do you implement that policy. The, the fourth one is on migration. Uh, needless to say, this was one of the things that uh, happened that uh, is still uh, happening, people moving back to some small town or rural areas, uh, and the impact that I had had in these uh, areas, the issue of livelihoods, that uh, is very critical, it goes beyond income, but livelihoods, how would people um, not only earn, but be able to survive. Mobility, mobility is getting across territory, very much uh, at the heart of urban linkages, which is 
it get part of the, um, uh, the discourse and help articulate um, uh, the divide or why is it important to have some freedom uh, of movement across territory. The issue of social protection I mentioned earlier, very much uh, critical. So when you have a message where people have to wash through taps and in rural areas they don't have tap, uh, tap water, what does that mean? You know, this type of sense, be sens sensible to the type of messages, social protection um, measures and blanket policies without thinking of those who are in a certain context uh, had hampered uh, some of the effort. Again, uh, so clear entry points in the guardian principle, if I want to take you back where you can see the connection on that all solutions have to reflect the reality on the ground that it should be some, that element of uh, integrated governance that was called upon and the issue of uh, data evidence and um, uh, I would say information technology that could support this and that we should not uh, take action that will harm uh, you know, the development. Uh, so this is very much important. This is mapped through all the, uh, the principles and why they can support um, urban road linkages. So that's all, all I have to say uh, in terms of uh, how urban road linkages from the history up to today in terms of pandemic makes a lot of sense and give us hope and um, uh, confidence that we are on the right track and this issue is still very much uh, on top of the agenda. So I stop here, Philip. Thank you very much. Thank you, Remy. There's applause here in the room, which I'm not sure if you can hear, but uh, thank you so much for, for a really powerful and uh, passionate um, kind of uh, speech and um, confirmation about the um, importance of urban rural linkages from a global perspective. Um, uh, for those who joined us uh, late, um, unfortunately, we are not. We don't have time to now have a Q and A. Um, uh, please use the chat line to drop uh, questions or comments. Uh, we do have a, a Q and A session right at the end um, where we can uh, pick things up, and hopefully, Remy, you will stay with us uh, to answer some questions. Now, we will move on in the program, and we have now three um, responses from different. Uh, geographical uh, regions. Um, the first one from Colombia, then followed by uh, um, a response from China and then uh, from Thuringia in Germany as a third response. So let me introduce you to the first speaker who uh, uh, joins us from Bogota, uh, Angela uh, Penagos, who is uh, the director of the Centro Latino Americano para de, uh, el Desarrollo Rural. Um, she's an economist. She has uh, long experience um, in. There you are. Hi. <laughs> Hi. How are you? Um, long experience in in working as a researcher at, at the inter at the intersection to policy, in territorial rural development, agriculture, and poverty reduction. You directed until 2015 the rural development unit at the National Planning Department in Colombia. Um, so we have. Really, really grateful that you can join us and speak to us. Um, the floor is yours. Okay. Uh, good morning here from Colombia. Good afternoon and good night. It's good to, to be here. Thanks, Remy, for this conversation and this presentation. It was very useful. Uh, first of all, I will share my screen. Uh, I hope that everybody can see it. It's working, no? Okay. Uh, after um, going with my presentation, I, I will say two things that I consider very important. And after the, uh, the presentation of Remy. First, uh, we are working in, in introducing urban rural linkages in the planification process. Uh, and these discussions come into the table probably with more power after the peace agreement negotiation. We recognize that many rural zones in Colombia are very uh, dis disconnected of the development and the cities, and we need new elements, new instruments to advance in 
in, in we can say that incorporated these songs in, in the, the dynamic of the country. Um, therefore, I consider that our entry point to adopting urban rural linkages probably uh, is the discussion about territorial inequality. Therefore, this presentation, I will, I will uh, try to, to advance on that, on that and what kind of elements we are using uh, to work on urban rural linkages as a instrument, uh, policy instruments to reducing territorial inequality in Colombia. So uh, first, I will I will tell something about territorial inequality in Colombia, how we are using urban rural linkages in the land use planning process, and some challenges and final insights uh, in terms of our experience. Uh, in the same way that Remy was saying, uh, here in Colombia, mm, even we have big cities. Uh, 53% of the population live in cities with less than 300,000 inhabitants. That means that we are a country with small towns and strong connections with rural zones. And in this map, this is a map of Colombia at night, we can see that the, the green spot are the big cities in Colombia. Here is Bogota, here is Cali, here is Medellin. But we can see that we have uh, connections, interdependencies between cities. This is the Andean zones, you know, where, where the mountains are in Colombia. And the development in Colombia is around these zones that are the Andean and the Caribbean zone that is here, Barranquilla, Cartagena, and, and Monteria. So where do people live? People live in, in Andean zone and Caribbean zone, but are very, very distributed around the mountains and the coast zones. It's not about agglomeration versus not agglomeration. The places outside the big cities are very diverse and are connected in the most cases. But the problem here in Colombia, as you can see in this slide, is the territorial inequality. We have strong con uh, GDP concentration, particularly in Bogota here, and in Cali, and in Medellin. And in terms of multidimensional poverty, we is the same the same behavior. The better conditions are in the big cities, in the Andean zones, but the periphery have. Uh, uh, are in worse conditions, uh, particularly in the Pacific zones and also in the Caribbean zone. And when we see the agricultural performance, uh, it has the same behavior. You know? The best uh, productivity is in the Andean zone near the big cities and this uh, particularly Bogota, Cali and Medellin and we need to, to work more on these blue cities, uh, blue zones and yellow zones that don't have the capacity to, to incorporate uh, innovations in agricultural and food productions. It is important to say that these conflict zones in Colombia are located also in these zones in the south of Colombia and here in, we can see in the northeast of Colombia and now we have strong problems uh, in these zones because the, the capacity or the institutional capacity is very weak. And uh, now uh, we don't, these zones are not well connected to the big cities and the small towns that could be, bring them an opportunity to, to face the poverty and to create conditions for access to market. And when we see poverty by territory size, uh, uh, we see that uh, we have made strong efforts reducing uh, poverty in the last decades. But we need to work more in deep rural zones and rural zones because uh, the, the best results are concentrated in the agglomeration zones, but we recognize now and after the uh, peace agreement negotiation that Colombia is not 
like a dichotomy a territory with rural and urban zones. We consider some small towns rural, and these small towns uh, have big challenges in terms of poverty. So why we do not, we need to address uh, territorial inequality. Uh, as Rodriguez, Andres Rodriguez Pose said, territorial inequality are becoming a fundamental negative externality. Oop. A territorial inequality affected the option of social and economic inclusion, as Remy said. A, a promote migration and loss of economic and social dynamics. And it also contributes to deforestation and loss of biodiversity. And finally, contributes to economic and political instability. Uh, as you can see, recent political unrest in Ecuador, Chile, and Colombia we, is, is from this uh, situation of territorial inequality in many, many towns in Colombia. So how are we using or we are trying to introduce rural, ur, ur, urban rural linkages in the land units planning, planning process? Okay, uh, as you know, we consider we have the same definition of urban rural as a complementary flow of people, natural resources, capital goods information between rural and peri-urban and urban areas. So we have labor commuting between rural and urban areas. Rural inhabitants go to, to the city to serve social services and markets where to sell their products and cities receive food, construction materials, and other goods. And many of these goods are related to environmental or eco ecological goods like water, eh, eh, some eh, issues related to ecosystem stability. That is very important. So knowledge and spill spillovers and technology transfer. It's also an other urban rural linkage that we want to introduce in our urban rural planning process. Why are important? I think TDC is very important and, and as Remy says, said there is increasing evidence that urban rural linkages, especially around intermediate cities and towns, can reduce poverty faster than the agglomeration economies of mega cities. And that is very important for a country as Colombia because as, as I said at the beginning of this presentation, uh, we are a country of small towns. Uh, and, and that is a big opportunity in terms of poverty reduction and integration of our country. Uh, how shorter distance to migrate and access services and markets, higher compatibility with their human capital and closer social capital networks. So we need to work on consumer links, urban rural remittances, rural, rural non-agricultural employment. And I would say that that is one of the big urban rural linkages, I, I, I may say that, because it's an opportunity particularly for women and young people. And upward pressures on agricultural wage that in the case of Colombia are the lowest wage in the rural economic activities. So policy for rural and urban development continue to be largely disconnected and are really discussed from an integrated perspective. That is uh, the, probably the big challenge here in Colombia because uh, we recognize that rural zones and the territorial inequality are a big challenge to peace construction, to development, but our traditional instruments don't have the conditions to incorporate, for example, rural, urban, and rural linkages as, as a big uh, opportunity or to reduce territorial inequality. Why? Because definition by population census and national household, household surveys are urban and rural. We have homogeneity of these categories. We don't didn't or we don't consider the difference between small, medium, and big cities. And we have isolation, no links between them 
And in many cases, uh, these instruments consider rural and agricultural agriculture the same topic. And we uh, uh, face the challenges of rural zones with agriculture uh, policy instruments. So, so what could be the solution? We need to see the territory as a spatial continuum. Urban and rural element interact, and we need to identify these interactions. We need to recognize them and consider within the urban and rural planning process. The rural zones are not limited to the agricultural production. There is activities there are, uh, such as commerce, tourism, and livelihoods that I will say that are very important to women and young people. So we will have cities and rural zones more inclusive and sustainable. Transition strips where a zone it is not mostly urban or rural, but rather mixed, as in the is the case with more land complexes, suburban areas, informal settlements, a strategic ecosystem. So urban rural linkages a key element in the land use of planning process. So some challenges. Uh, what public investment should be made to bring urban and rural closer together in a sustainable way. We need to work more, more on that. How to strengthen the capacities of local governments to work in a coordinated way between administrative units that make up rural urban territory. How to promote coalitions capable of articulating a strategy for developing concert, concerted territory and resolving territorial conflict. So in Colombia, we are advancing on that, introduce, introducing the rural urban linkages and innovation in the territorial development policies. We are trying to work on that with local authorities that are there, uh, they have the responsibility to the use planning process and they need to involve uh, the rural zones, but they don't have the instruments and the knowledge to incorporate a rural zones in the development process. Therefore, a, we, we, we can say that urban rural structure is defined as the model of occupation of the territory that established in a general way the strategy of localization and sustainable spatial distribution of the activities. And it is built from the interdependence relationship existing between urban and rural zones. So to, to, to work on that, we propose the recognition of the role of rurality in the development of municipalities and regions, the recognition of mutual benefits in relations between urban and rural areas, the mechanisms that establish a balance in the relations between urban and rural areas, and the recognition of the inhabitants of rural areas, areas as leading actors in the decision-making process. That is very, very important and then the recognition of the supra-municipal implication of the relations between urban and rural areas. So this is a small contribution to the discussion, uh, and we are working on that here in Colombia. Uh, we need to, to work more on that, and probably we will have an opportunity next year because many of the local authorities needs to advance on the use planning instrument we call here in Colombia Plan de Ordenamiento Territorial. Uh, we will work with some territories on that. And thank you very much uh, for this space. Uh, go ahead, Hannes. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much, Angela. Um, Angela, I hope you will stay with us um, to maybe answer some questions in the Q&A at the end. Um, I will be. Thank you. Um, yeah. We will uh, race to the next um, uh, response, um, this time from China, and I would like to ask my colleague, Professor Guijin Yang, to introduce uh, the next speaker. Uh, thank you, Philip, for that arrangement uh, to me to uh, this honor to introduce Professor Zhao Ming. Um, 
very honored to be able to introduce Professor Zhao Min. Professor Zhao Min studies uh, urbanization in China and urbanization development in China. He's very famous uh, uh, for uh, uh, his research in this field uh, dedicated to the policy and policy education in urban rural development in China. In the current period, in the territorial development planning in China, he's also a, an expert who constantly provides uh, training for the urban planners and uh, territorial uh, development planners. And the floor is yours, Professor Zhang. Uh, hi. Uh, did you hear me? Yes. Uh, and also the screen, no problem? The screen, no problem. Okay. Uh, let, let me organize this. Okay, uh, everybody. Uh, good afternoon in Berlin. Good afternoon. <laughs> good evening in, in China. Uh, two minutes. Uh, I try to give I give you very brief introduction for the history and the trends of urban rural development in China. Actually, uh, I have a views. There are actually three. Three aspect. One is the urban development, one is the rural development, and the, the third aspect is the urban and the rural linkage. Uh, because if without, suppose without a rural development and a rural investment, the linkage is, is means nothing. So in, 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 Ch in Chinese history, you know, at the beginning of the, the setup of New China, the uh, China actually was a very backward agricultural country. Uh, in terms of urbanization level, is only about 10%. Uh, in 1950s, China learned the, the planned economy from the former Soviet Union. Uh, the, the planned economy not only means economy uh, sector, but also social management. Uh, all aspects, uh, all the development should subject to the plans. Uh, the urban and the rural dual structure, dual system was formed in that time. Under the structure, a strict urban and rural household registration system was adopted. Uh, historically, uh, if we take a historical view, the system has maintained the social stability and achieved a certain level of industrialization and avoided urban large-scale slum issues. It's happened in, in many third world countries. But it also has led the, uh, to this serious and the long-term consequences, such as insufficient economic vitality, urban and rural separation, and a block of social mobility. Uh, uh, in 1979, China adopted a, a policy of reform and, and opening up. Over the past 40 years, the economy has developed rapidly. Uh, as uh, you see the, the, the figure, the GDP, not only the GDP term, but also uh, the social development. The urbanization rate actually raised from around 18% in 1977. Uh, to nowadays around uh, 60, actually just above 60%. So this change is very dramatic. In fact, the reform was firstly made a major breakthrough in the countryside. So it's not open take the leadership, but the, the reform, uh, the development happened in, in new development happened in countryside. So the agricultural productivity was increased. People are free to move and a large number of surplus rural labor was entered the secondary and the tertiary industry. So the rural supported the secondary and tertiary sector. And among which a large proportion of surplus labor entered the urban area. By 
2018, the country's total number of migrants, migrant workers reached 288 million, of which 173 million left their home townships. Some are, you know, they, they moved to the nearby towns and cities, but the majority are moved to, to the middle-sized and the largest, uh, largest city in the super cities. According to the uh, national census, the sixth uh, census, there were 228 million migrants living in cities and the towns, official towns. For example, you know, uh, take Shanghai as an example. Shanghai's uh, 24 million urban population, actually 9 million among which are migrants. That means without a uh, Hoku status without a permanent uh, citizenship. Uh, we have done a lot of survey uh, in political study uh, and try to explain uh, the, what's happening in rural side and urban side, and uh, uh, also did some uh, demographic uh, research uh, because uh, time limits uh, omit this. And also, uh, we did uh, uh, get some conclusions, uh, including. Uh, where uh, our view on risk turn point and, uh, and urban and rural uh, process in China, we, we actually reached some theoretical conclusions. Uh, I hope we can, I can share you uh, later. And at the same time of economic, uh, quick, uh, fast economic development, the cities and the rural areas, and uh, uh, particularly the environmental in general, faced, the, faced with many problems and challenges. And the relationships between city and the countryside should be redefined. Uh, in that, uh, in, as a countermeasure, the central government issued a series of policies to promote urban and rural coordination. Uh, and uh, integrated urban rural development and so on. There are many policies. Uh, and also in 19, uh, in 2007, uh, the urban planning law was replaced by the urban and the rural planning law. It's also uh, a bigger move. In the cities, the goals and the targets were set up in terms of providing basic public service for migrants and granting migrants works with the local status. If if nowadays uh, the, uh, the migrants work, if they want to stay in the middle city, in the uh, small size of the city, they are allowed. You know, the, the, the hook is open uh, in certain level of cities, but not the super city yet. In rural area, the so-called beautiful countryside development and the new rural programs were uh, planned and invested and conducted uh, nationwide. Uh, uh, to pre uh, preserve uh, the beauty of rural side, uh, uh, the countryside like uh, like this, uh, this, and also uh, some older villages in the mountain areas are being renovated. Uh, this uh, also in uh, Zhejiang province, and uh, uh, and also a lot of uh, villages for farmers to be built up in in the suburban area. In, in the nearby the, the townships, uh, this is in Zhejiang, this is in, uh, in Sichuan, uh, in, uh, in suburban Chengdu. And also uh, in, in Xinjiang, there are large scale housing projects for the Uyghur people. Uh, as a, a part of the poverty relief program, all the families supposed sh uh, should provide a uh, safe and comfortable uh, housing. And uh, uh, since the 18th uh, CPC National Congress in uh, 2012, under the leadership of Xi Jinping, the, the policy orientation uh, have been adjusted, in my view. Being aware of the severe contradictions caused by the previous development model, the central government issued the many policies, again, uh, including uh, that a new style urbanization plan in 2040, 
and the rural revitalization strategic plan in 2018. The two plans are separate plan, but they are related together and support each other in order to promote integrated urban and rural development. The new policy uh, and plans have achieved great results uh, so far, including the improvement of the general ecological environment. If you visit Beijing and Shanghai, you will find the, 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 the sky is much clearer than before, as well as some new approaches and uh, appearances in urban and rural development. And most re remarkably, the task of lifting rural poverty will be accomplished by the end of this year. This is a, a political will. It will realize, I certainly believe. And for the future, as, as far as open rural relationship is concerned, though the dual system has been changed a lot, but it is still remains in, uh, in certain degree and they need some time and they need hard measures to face it out completely. So this is a big issue uh, in, in, in our country that we're still facing, but maybe not so much in Zhejiang, in Jiangsu or in suburban uh, part of Shanghai. So far there are still obstacles for migrants work migrant workers to settle down in cities. That's true, particularly for the super city. But in other sides, we should aware many rural people and migrant workers do not want to change their rural status because the rural status also have some benefits, maybe sometimes big benefits of the urban citizens. So this is another issue. We not only uh, to brand the, the dual system, but also uh, we should uh, consider how to uh, lift uh, to, to uh, limit it uh, smartly, eff uh, effectively. And uh, lastly, but not uh, least, while rural needs revitalization in general, the theme of smart shrinkage should apply to many of the rural settlements, as you know, uh, in city, we should pursue smart growth, but in rural area, we also should consider the smart shrinking. We, we certainly cannot uh, preserve and retain all the, all the villages. That's all. Uh, thank you for your listening. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Tommy. Uh, thank you so much for the presentation, uh, for giving us a big picture, yet very uh, accurate uh, uh, description of uh, China's uh, rural urban development plan in China. Uh, well, uh, uh, we don't really have a lot of time for you, so maybe we're going to listen to your lecture Thank you. later. Thank you. Thank you very much um, uh, for, for this um, uh, great insight into a, a broad um, historical um, uh, and changing relationship um, between urban and rural and China. So now we, we will come back to China in the last uh, contribution. Uh, today, uh, but before we have a third response um, from Germany this time, and I would like to invite uh, Dr. Mat Marta Döler Besadi uh, to the stage. Um, she is uh, currently the director of the IBA, the International Building Exhibition Thuringia, um, which is a policy tool that she will introduce uh, to us in a second, um, uh, and she will explain why this is relevant in the context of our uh, discussion. Um, she is, um, her career is fascinating because she, she changed sides so many times uh, as uh, a practitioner, um, uh, but also as a member of a municipal government, uh, a member of uh, the Ministry um, of Construction for some time, and now uh, heading uh, the IBA. So um, we are really pleased to, to have you, and also um, your organization is um, a member of our research consortium. Um, Here's your floor.
Yes, good afternoon. Um, and um, thank you very much for the speakers. Uh, to widen the perspectives makes clear, on the one hand, how different the contexts are, and on the other hand, how similar the issues and the questions to be answered. That's really very interesting for me. Um, only a few hundred kilometers away from Turingia and with my eyes a little narrowed, I imagine Turingia like this. Beautiful landscape, small settlement, rich architectural heritage. Um, you'll find the Turingian forest and uh, the Turingian basin uh, territory for forestry and agriculture. It is a cultural landscape in the truest sense of word. Some key figures about Turingia with inhabitants, you can read them, I won't, um, I won't read them for you. Um, uh, Turingia is, situ is located in the middle of Germany. The geographical center lies exactly, of Germany lies exactly here. If we zoom out, uh, to a global scale, it is easy to see that the global trends are affecting everyone, us in our comparatively small Turingia and you in other countries and continents. Um, the Scientific Advisory Council of the federal government, for example, has termed this age the century of relocation or of migration, and that is true at a global context over continents as much as it is at a smaller scale between towns and the countryside. Against such a background, uh, our common theme in Turingia is the relationship between towns and cities and countrysides. We call this Stadtland. The map of Turingia, um, of Turingia settlements structures shows a predominantly rural network of towns, smaller towns mostly, a city, town, country, landscape uh, continuum. It shows clearly a small-scale settlement. Almost all of these little towns and villages have existed for centuries. The cities are small to medium-sized, uh, Erfurt, the capital, has just a quarter of a million inhabitants. Um, what a size if you compare it with your Chinese uh, uh, situation. And the towns, or that's the political structure of the counties. Yes, a town looks, looks like a town and the countryside and the village looks like a village, but the way of life is very similar. It is urban, more or less urban. People's living conditions are similar. They commute to work. Either they live in a city or on the countryside. Uh, they shop in supermarkets and they fly to holiday destinations all over the world. In spite of this, ever more people are moving to urban conurbations. And that leads to serious consequences. First, the young people leave the countryside, then the schools closes, the pub too, the nearest doctor is in the next town, the railway station is decommissioned, etc. The trends, um, the trends we have been seeing over the past decades impact on the quality of life. Still, the next district town with a school, the local council, a railway station and shopping facilities is rarely uh, more than three or 30 kilometers away. And aside from that, there is a remarkable density of cultural offerings. We have historical castles, we have museums, we have theaters, even opera houses, we have um, a lot. Iba Turingia strives to find positive answers to the question of how to shape a positive future for the rural municipalities and small towns amidst the larger towns. We work together with local stakeholders uh, interested in doing things differently. We create spaces of experimentation, act as a laboratory. In the best case, this bring, can bring 
forth, that bring forth models for new, new uh, ways of living in this context and blueprints for imitation. So we ask ourselves and our partners, what do we need for a good quality of life? Where does our electricity come from? And you can widen this question to all kinds of resources or of, on water supply and questions like this. Who is, who makes the city? Who are the actors who act there and who cooperatives with whom? How can we maintain the tradition of villages? Uh, what kind of landscape do we want to live in? And finally, how do we get out into the country? What entices us to stay? IBA projects in progress all over Thuringia are in progress all over Thuringia, and they are too numerous. I'll show you just an overview um, to mention in detail. But what we, uh, but what they share is that they respond through the means of architecture or landscape design and new approaches in cooperation, in governmental structures, in funding it with public subsidies or private meanings, uh, to the changing perspective and processes in their surrounding context. They experiment, they experiment with new structures of governance, of cooperation, and of sharing responsibility. Of course, the IBA projects have not arisen out of a vacuum, but from their specific historical, topographic, cultural, social, landscape context within their uh, concrete political situation and thus address the big social issues outlined earlier in a concrete and specific way. Finally, I would like to present some of not right conclusions, but of some principles of our working method, like an e as an EBA. Um, we figured them out so far with the help of our board of experts, and they are still in discussion and not finalized yet. It is an urban country, it, and when we work, it's about Turingia as a whole. We don't focus only on cities or on country sites. Turingia's key resource is Turingia. We look for our resources within the country and not from somewhere else. And we find it. Heimat, a very contradictory term in Germany and a specific, in a cultural way in our professional debate, but it is a focus. You also could translate it with identity, how the people are um, abound in their regions. And to translate this in a professional language, I would say we need to have strategies and activities that relate to the region and they are regionally based. Yes, the utopian dreams and the new proposals and the visions and the next steps in implementing them First, they must be found and designed. And finally, the beauty reveals itself in its public character. Um, if the region, if the villages, if the little towns have their public character, and if the people cooperative and understand it this way, then we can go forward. Thank you. Thank you very much, Marta. So um, for those who joined us late, please um, put your questions or comments into the chat line. We will pick them up, hopefully, um, in the discussion session. But before we come to that, we have a final um, input now from my colleague, Hannes Langut, um, and uh, who will introduce you a little bit to the ambitions of this Sino-German research project, um, rural assembly that um, is um, the framework um, also for this conference, um, Hannes. Dear ladies and gentlemen, dear government representatives from China, dear colleagues um, here in the room, but also outside um, today, 
On behalf of the Urban Rural Assembly um, Research Consortium, I'm going to briefly introduce the project, um, including several sustainability challenges um, that we face across the case study region, um, the research questions we um, tackle on, as well as tools and methods um, the project aims to further develop in the Chinese uh, context. The URA project um, is funded by the BMBF, the German Federal Ministry of Education and Research, and it started um, in 2009-19 with an initial phase and will now continue with a four years main phase um, starting end of this year. The project is part of the BMBF funding line Sustainable Development of Urban Regions. Besides TU Berlin Habitat Unit and the College of Architecture and Urban Planning at Tonti University Shanghai, who are both taking up the lead in that project, the Bauhaus Universität um, Weimar, the Leibniz Institute of Ecological Urban and Regional Development from Dresden, Shanghai University and Zhejiang University are the key academic partners of the consortium um, in this project. Um, Earlier, Remy Ziciping from UN Habitat um, left us with key messages to be reconsidered when we work in the field of urban rural planning and governance. Key messages that show a broad spectrum of future actions for sustainable development of urban regions. And Remy, I think, laid it out very well. Um, the main emphasis must be to promote the effective integration of urban rural linkages into planning and governance approaches. And it's exactly here where the URA project enters, following the hypothesis that integrated, participatory and actor-oriented urban rural research and development represents the key lever or one of the key lever um, to build resilient and sustainable futures for urban regions. First of all, I just want to briefly introduce um, the research context of the project. It's the Taicho Huang Yen region in Zhejiang province. The case study region is located right at the edge of the Chinese Eastern Urbanization Corridor, which can be seen on the left um, hand of the, of the screen. So Taicho Huang Yen region is located in between three key urbanization um, clusters. It's first the Yangtze River Delta urbanization cluster um, comprising the cities of Shanghai, Hangzhou, and Ningbo. Um, then it's south of Taicho, the Wenzhou Fuzhou urban cluster and the central um, Yangtze, Yangtze River um, urban cluster um, with the cities of um, Shangja and Wuhan. The graphic on the right um, shows, I think, very well um, why the project has selected um, Taicho Huang Yen as a case, um, namely because of its cross-border allocation right at the interface of the urban core center of Taicho City and the rural western Huang Yen region. So it is this urban hinterland relationship the project is interested in to further focus and set up re its research and development agenda. If we have a closer look um, to the area, um, then we recognize a rapid urban spatial transformation during the last 20 to 25 years. And as can be seen in these graphics, um, formerly agricultural um, land mainly got transformed into new urban infrastructure and built up areas, especially concentrating, uh, concentrating in the three core urban districts of Taichou which are namely Zhaojiang, Lu Jiao, and Huang Yen district. I think it can be seen in this graphics very well how urban expansion has relentlessly incorporated formerly rural areas and how the three urban districts have been developed towards a strongly urbanized network across the whole region. Another close up shows how former villages old villages um, have got replaced by new residential areas, built up infrastructures um, and road systems, as well as new industrial developments. But what lies behind such spatial transformation is a more hidden, a more, yeah, um, a more um, non-material network of manifold um, um, interrelations, um, everyday flows of people, of goods, and financial investments that result in new complex spatial constellations. And as we have heard already earlier today, 
such emerging urban rural constellations, including its also translocal and global linkages, are still remaining little studied and reconsidered when it comes to contemporary approaches in urban planning governance, not only in China, but worldwide. And here the project enters, aiming to bring together interdisciplinary research fields that meet along the concept um, of urban rural interface. With this concept, um, um, we think that we have the potential or th that the, the concept has the potential to serve as an overarching framework for the project and is especially shared among the governance and it's, uh, it's, it's a concept which is especially shared among the governance field. Um, so at the same time also um, these debates are calling for the development of new theoretical approaches and practical tools in reading understanding and steering these urban rural interrelations towards more sustainability. Also, the Chinese government has recognized this urgent need um, besides more recent policy um, announcements like the integrated national territorial spatial planning approach. Also, the, or especially the rural re revitalization strategy launched in 2018 to promote the economic growth of especially um, rural hinterland areas um, can be seen as a lever towards more balanced development between urban and rural areas. During its conception period back in 2015, rural, re rural revitalization across Western Huang Yen has also served as a starting point um, for our collaboration together with Tonchi University. Back then, TU Berlin and Kaup Tonchi um, students have jointly conducted design studios in Sha Tan and Wuyanto village area. So we are very grateful for the generous support since then from our partners from Tonchi and especially from Huang Yan district, as well as Taichou municipality. I think without their trust in our collaboration um, and in our field studies we have conducted so far, um, we couldn't have developed the Urban Rural Assembly project to that current stage. So also thank you very much for the trust at this point. Today, the joint um, rural revitalization projects conducted between um, TU Berlin and Tonchi University can be understood as a catalyst for the Sino-German cooperation um, we have now in the URA project. Throughout the last years, we have conducted several other collaboration formats, like, for example, international conferences on urban rural topics, and have established also um, local infrastructure in Western Huang Yen um, that will serve especially researchers and students for future um, um, field visits. So following this, we have built a Sino-German research consortium around a shared interest of studying rural urbanization processes from interdisciplinary perspectives. This consortium is accompanied by several local practice partners and also global NGOs like UN Habitat and ICLEI Local Governments for Sustainability. So the main aim of the collaboration is to build a multidisciplinary understanding of urban rural interfaces in the case of Taichou Huang Yen region. And here we see the different research disciplines the URA project assembles. Um, besides urban and architectural disciplines focusing on the study of urban rural socio-spatial practices, there will be research approaches more looking into the transformation of urban rural landscapes and ecosystems. Other colleagues from the field of circular economy, TU Berlin, will conduct research on material cycles in the region and other non-material aspects like, for example, everyday socioeconomic mobility and inclusion will be addressed by colleagues from sociology and cultural studies. So the URA project is conceptualized and guided along four different main research questions. The very first one addresses um, context-specific sustainability challenges to be further studied across place, um, space and scales alike. So therefore, the project works with a case study design based on Reallabore, or so-called living labs. Three specific urban rural living labs have been identified and selected throughout the last um, 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 yeah, one and a half years. And in order to, so in order to now serve as local research and development anchors um, across all disciplines and approaches. 
So each, li each um, living lab you see here in this graphic um, covers an area of approximately three to three kilometers, differing not only in its spatial, but also in its sectoral and thematic settings. The selected labs constitute prototypic transition zones or constellations at the Taicho Wangyan Urban Rural Interface we are interested in. Beiyang Township, especially the area around Seahurf Eco Agricultural Farming in the north of Beiyang, serves as a first living lab. Based on industrialized agriculture and the development of ecotourism that follows the model of characteristic town development, a specific policy in the local context, the main sustain sustainability risks that have been identified so far result from high urbanization pressure on regional ecosystem services, especially causing air, water, and soil contamination. Besides several first development potentials um, can be stated, for example, the high degree of identified innovation in entrepreneurial eco-farming approaches, as well as the potential of increasing organic waste recycling across Beiyang. Deriving from this, the URA partners um, have started to work on several action plans, like, for example, and comprehensive stakeholder analysis and material flow analysis um, in the agricultural sector, um, which is especially focusing on wild rice production. Um, besides that, colleagues from Bauhaus Universität and Leibniz Research Institute are working on GIS-based spatial analysis of urban rural landscape and ecosystem transformation. And we at Habitat Unit, we have started qualitative research on socio-spatial practices that are related to transforming farming practices. It means we are interested to better understand more informal spatial practices at the urban rural interface that emerge in the shadow of formal planning and top-down transformation. All in all, um, throughout the next four years, these different research approaches will serve as ground for the transdisciplinary development of future scenarios of integrated development for the individual living labs. In this case um, of Beiyang Town, connecting sustainable nutrient and waste cycles to support ecological food production and inclusive um, ecotourism in the region. The second selected um, case study applies to a wider rapidly urbanizing area around Qifang village in eastern Huangyan. And here, enormous private investments into the long-standing Taicho uh, molding manufacturing industry leads to high urbanization pressure, which results in threatening regional biodiversity, lacking public infrastructure, and an increasing shortage of appropriate and affordable housing, especially for the big amount of floating population and migrant workers. So far, identified development potentials are related to globally oriented businesses in the sustainability sector, as well as identified value chains that are based on everyday practices and linkages between villagers, migrant workers, and business enterprises. Um, and here, the URA team is starting to engage with stakeholder and uh, material flow analysis as well, especially focusing on the plastic sector. Um, and um, also GIS-based spatial analysis um, as well as spatial syntax analysis to better understand the accessibility of public services for migrant workers and other users. Um, and from a socio-spatial perspective, also the transformation of dwelling practices, especially by migrant workers that lack appropriate housing, is currently getting researched on. So following this, the main aim is to take all these transformation um, it is transforming material and non-material aspects more visible and make them more tangible for planning disciplines in order to then promote a more actor-oriented development. The research in the third living lab has not been started yet, but it will be linked to newly started um, development projects um, that are promoting, um, that are promoted by the provincial government level um, namely also especially the, Zhang, um, the Zhangjiang village area um, um, and the wetland park development um, uh, in the, um, and it's located in the southeast of Huangyan district. So in that context, um, especially the relocation of local villagers, loss of cultural and building heritage will be addressed by the research team as well as the improvement of water and soil quality. 
based on the interdisciplinary research and development engagement within the selected local urban rural living labs, aiming to formulate specific um, lab-related implementation plans, the UR project will also address several other levels and scales of impact. On the regional or rather sub-regional level, the UR project will follow up the question of how identified local innovations can be upscaled and linked towards more effective transition to sustainability pathways. So development pathways, we mean that consider and build on urban rural linkages. Therefore, the URA consortium, together with practice partners, will develop integrated transformation scenarios for the wider region. And here, the so-called strategic ground build method, a participatory planning tool, mainly applied in the European planning context so far, will be used as an entry point to be further developed, site and context specific together with Chinese partners. Finally, this transdisciplinary disciplinary engagement aims to enrich ongoing policy reforms in China through more actor-oriented and participatory tools and strategies. The third research questions ask how such developed tools and implementation plans can help to establish a showcase for the qualitative um, refinement of recent Chinese policy reforms. So this especially means how the developed tools can be aligned with new policy development and how they can be impl implemented in provincial and or national level or on provincial and national level. So in order to achieve these goals, the project works together with Chinese and global governmental and non-governmental organizations like ICLE and UN Habitat, and the goal is to transfer the learning from the local Taichou Huangyan case into new policy briefs that have the possibility to inform other Chinese but also global regions about integrated urban rural development. And here, especially to be mentioned, the emerging potential also, which we see, um, to link the Taichou Huangyan case back to Germany in order to enrich, for example, the Iba Turingia's activities on urban rural transformation. So the fourth research question is more targeting global debates on SDG-oriented urban rural planning um, and aims to disseminate findings and knowledge set, sets towards an international audience. Vice versa, how it's also aiming to better understand how Taichou Wang Yan can benefit from global debates in that field. So all of these questions will be addressed through certain tools and methods that I have already touched on and that bring together the discipline-specific um, research themes on different scales. So um, deriving from these um, different methods and um, approaches, the main outcomes to be mentioned are the development of lab-specific implementation strategies which are to be realized um, during a potential later implementation phase. The strategic ground build development, specifically in the Chinese context further developed, um, for the Taichou Huangyan region to promote integrated urban rural transformation pathways. And from all that, a derived toolbox for integrated and participatory planning, um, which also leads to um, the development of global urban policy briefs um, um, and um, yeah, parallel, we will also conduct for sure a series of international traveling conferences and final exhibition um, of URA outcomes. So beyond all that, um, we have also started to conceptualize and to conduct or to develop a periodical and specific URA periodical that will be published annually in the framework of the project. And um, just this week, we have um, finished the first issue that addressed the topic of the manifold interfaces, um, interfaces, um, the research project, but also the research context um, tackles on. And um, it comprises the first outcomes or the first um, yeah, approaches the project um, uh, brings together. It's an open access publication. You're all um, welcome to um, find it on the website later on. And um, yeah, thank you for your attention today. And um, yeah, I'm very much looking forward to um, the discussion. Okay, thank you very much, Hannes. Um, now I would like to open the, the Q&A. So um, please, um, if you joined us, um, 
via Zoom or here in the room, um, uh, come up with questions to any of these speakers uh, from this afternoon. Um, state your name maybe really briefly and then ideally direct your question to a specific um, speaker. Who would like to start? Um, I can't see the, if, if, if you feel uncomfortable that you are uh, about technical issues, um, you can also write your question into the chat line and we'll pick it up and read it out. Um, <clears throat> I mean, otherwise I would, uh, ah, there's a question here in the room, yeah, Mr. Lee. Um, hello everyone. Um, I'm Sui Li uh, Xiao on, from IOER, and I have a question for Professor Zhao Ming. Actually, uh, I'm very interested. You talk about the uh, rural need uh, the revitalization in general, and also need the smart uh, shrinkage. Uh, could you give me uh, more introduction of this smart shrinkage? Thank you. Thank you for your question. Uh, actually, if you you visit uh, uh, villages in China, in uh, particularly in uh, some uh, middle part of China, the, the villages, a lot of villages are very empty. You know, uh, the demand actually for housing, for school, for all the facilities is shrinking. So in that time, no, the, uh, the, the village will be continuous working, but uh, the demand for the volume uh, will decline. And also because of decline, uh, we, we, the local government has faced a lot of uh, difficulties, financial difficulties. For example, the village, uh, traditionally all villages have schools. Nowadays, the, the village school maybe only have five kids, 10 kids. So they're very hard to maintain the, the the uh, provision, the, the facilities. So the shrinkage means some uh, some village should be combined together. Some uh, service should be upgraded uh, to above level uh, 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 township rather than uh, disposed uh, dis disposed uh, provision. So this this is very obvious because urbanization is still going on. So the the general trend is uh, rural population will decline continuously, but certainly the villages uh, will not totally disappear, but uh, the size uh, will shrinking. So we should smartly deal with this issue to either to put this, uh, all the villages, some villages together, uh, or either to provide services in more smart and efficient way. So uh, this is a brief answer to your question, thanks. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, I can maybe jump in with a, with a question, a quick question to Angela. You very powerfully presented um, this, to us the insight of territorial inequality, which I think is um, more or less um, running through all these uh, case studies that we, we listened to this afternoon. And you mentioned also the, the need for um, um, an inclusion of those sort of uh, disadvantaged parts in uh, planning and discussions. Um, but we often make the experience that, um, uh, you know, the, the voice um, of the debate, uh, not, not only in uh, scholarship or larger policy, but also in, in planning uh, is often dominated again by, by more uh, resourced and better, better maybe um, by privileged sort of um, uh, urban urban uh, based institutions so how do you organize this sort of participatory process across you know how do you actually really um, make sure that in territorial planning you can get a more even representation okay thanks for this question uh, we are working on some indicators that are very important to introduce uh, uh, the people from rural zones and to create conditions to a better participation. Here in Colombia, when we are working on uh, 
planning process, it is important to, to cover or to, re, to advance in a governance process, we, we call that, and it, it must to integrate people, women, indigenous people in this planification process. So after that negotiations, uh, this, this proposal need, need, needs to go to the, to the um, um, Congress space, not, not at the local level, obviously. And the, we are proposing that if they don't have some indicators in terms of participation and uh, different actors in that process, it could be it couldn't be a approved this the planning process in the congress space at the local level i i don't know how to say it, a congress space in in at the local level in english but we said that in, in spanish consejo is not the same as the national space is at the local level uh, but we that is at this moment just a proposal it is because we need to change the law for that. Uh, and we are working to try to involve that in a voluntary way. Great, thank you very much. There's a question here uh, in the room from Susanne Rotter. Yeah, thank you. Um, my name is Susanne Rotter, I'm from TU Berlin, the group of circular economy and recycling technologies. I would have a question maybe to Remy, as researchers, we know all how difficult it is to do this research in this transdisciplinary context. And I see this topic also very much a challenge in terms of policy making to have transsectoral policy specifically addressing this, this urban rural um, interface uh, and, and relationships. And how, what, what would you have as recommendations or maybe also an outlook in the future how to overcome um, also conflicts in policies? So if we talk about, agri we have the sectoral policies, agriculture, economic development, um, infrastructure, environment, and uh, what can we learn also for policy making from multidisciplinary research? Me, the question was yeah, yeah, to you. Yeah, yeah, I got that. Thanks a lot. I think this is very important. Uh, this um, issue of transdisciplinary, interdisciplinary, you know, whatever thing you can mix together for a concoction that works, I uh, don't mind. Uh, so my first point is that that's why in my presentation I was talking about entry point. You can be working in agriculture, but you can still link to the urban rural continuum. It will not stop you. You can be in a sector, but you reach out. So that's the first point. The second is uh, uh, the second thing is that I don't. Okay, in research you are um, familiar with that transdisciplinary, interdisciplinary, you know. But that thing that this idea of um, uh, be curious, open. I always say it, uh, if you are working. Uh, in, I don't know, a food um, engineering. There's nothing that will stop you to start thinking of, of uh, urban design or architecture. When you start opening that up, that's where creativity comes in. So that would be my second argument. Open up. If you are in the science of uh, biotechnology in a, a university, go and talk to the one who, uh, in the department of mathematics or architecture. You're going to see that at the bottom you already you have something in common. The third message, recommendation is that keep the, you know, the, I would say the, um, the bottom line really at the heart. If you th think about equity, how do you make things equitable? How do you make this, you know, uh, how do you reduce the gap? You will be contributing. If you think of um, a high level values, it could be uh, issue of equality, issue of, um, uh, you know, a fairness, then you will be able to contribute and make a difference. So I believe that wherever you are, you don't have to change, but you have to reach out. You have to have an, um, a higher goal, higher uh, purpose on your research, and then be 
uh, ready to innovate. Innovate. If you keep doing the using the same methods that you can, if you start borrowing a methodology, say from physics or from other department, you will see that you're going to be more creative in the way you 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 are engaging to really advance this topic. So the sectoral thing, and if there is a fourth thing I could add, advise at the policy level, what I um, at time advice is that the time you're going to have a grant or a funding that we have a criteria that we want this grant to work both on urban and rural, that will start making sense. Because even the way the grants are structured, the way funding is structured, the way the government departments are structured, I talk about the government uh, structuring um, in my presentation, but the way the funding stream is structured, disturb or discourage that uh, type of uh, engagement. But the time is gonna encourage um, of funding that touch on the continuum within the territory will be making a difference at the policy and financing mechanism that we may have. So these are the four ideas that I may have in terms of recommendation. Okay, thank you, um, Remy. Uh, we can see from uh, Min Zhao's um, screen that it's already uh, become night in uh, Shanghai. Um, and uh, our session indeed is... Um, uh, coming to a close because the analog part of this conference actually has to catch a train. Um, but uh, what sort of interested you in this um, uh, yeah, tour de force to uh, compare quite different regions around the world, um, Colombia, uh, Germany, um, uh, China, uh, and uh, many other regions that also Remy introduced briefly. Um, Maybe this would be a nice way to end up the session. Um, and uh, who would like to start? Maybe, Marta, could I ask you to, to start? Um, yes. Um, I'm sure that the urban-rural linkages, yeah. what we are dealing with, um, See you right uh, what we are dealing with, uh, is, has become a major social issue in Germany and in the world. Um, and I think that we are on a, on a moment of a paradigmatic turn to put a lot more attention um, to the countryside and to this, not only the countryside, but to that kind of linkages. That's not kind of a U-turn of people who moved from the countryside to cities, metropoles, bigger or smaller, and then have a special longing to the countryside and come back. Um, it is another kind of paradigmatic turn because um, we, we have to, to start with a new, we, in German, in, in Turingia we call it a social metabolism. Um, of the society as a whole with their resources against the background of climate change. We can't act in the same way as we did it before. The, at least in Germany or maybe in Europe, uh, the, past, um, the, the past centuries was an era of modernization that means industrialization and, uh, uh, the, and um, it was a synonymous for urbanization, that was all the same, and we forgot the countryside completely. And now we have to come back to this point, not only from social fairness for the people who live there, not only from the view of chances for them, that's in Germany quite obvious, that, that this is also a space for chances, but we have to act in another way with our resources, uh, and with all the preconditions we need, either in cities or towns or on the countryside. Well, that was Thank you, my Marta. last words. <laughs> Thank you, Marta. Maybe I'll pass, pass on to uh, Yang Guiqing from Shanghai. Yang, uh, Yang Guiqing, what, what are your okay, takeaways? Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Philip. I think uh, it's uh, uh, quite a uh, success uh, for the uh, uh, talk, uh, topic and the talking. I think uh, there are a common uh, a, a common points among that the uh, URL, urban rural linkage, urban rural interface, urban rural a, uh, assembly. Uh, these are two uh, very uh, three very important uh, um, 
the keywords, they uh, cause that the flowing of the uh, aspects uh, uh, between the urban and the, the rural. This is uh, much important now uh, all over the world. Uh, the most things is uh, not to, uh, not simply make that happen to flow, um, uh, but uh, it should be uh, pay attention to that the um, uh, the achievement as as well as the challenges. Because uh, when the uh, flow happened among uh, between the among the cities regions, that uh, the uh, capital that the uh, investment uh, they the direction of these flows will pursue the uh, more profit and much quicker. And they will uh, cause that uh, not only for the efficiency, but also for the, uh, uh, the challenge for the equity and ecological ecology. So this is uh, quite important for our start of this uh, uh, URA project. So the metabolism is not only happened that for the uh, space, spatial, but also for the social uh, structure. So that's the real uh, in uh, important uh, to uh, bridge that the space and the social uh, research. So uh, uh, that will give us the, uh, the opportunity for the planning as a tool, like to uh, have the linkage with the policy. This is a quite a uh, fundamental uh, thinking. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Maybe to stay in Shanghai and uh, to ask Zhao Min to um, give us a quick summary from your point of view. Yes, uh, I think that the topic is interesting, you know, urban and uh, rural uh, linkage uh, should be, uh, you know, look at this as a whole. Uh, but uh, actually, there are still uh, differences. Urban development also, itself, also very important. If the urban is very weak, they cannot support the super rural people. Uh, and also, if, if government really neglected the rural development, it will all cause tr trouble. So, uh, urban strategy, rural strategy, they self are also important. Then we should, and also we should put it together. Uh, uh, that not means only the interface. I visited uh, India twice, you know. When I look at the, the urban slum area in Bombay, you know, so it's so, so shocking. The, the living condition is so bad. The people, why not return to the countryside? In China, maybe the, the, the migrants work already got back if the, the wages are so low, the living condition is so bad. But they have no choice. They cannot go back because the rural areas is in much worse condition. It's very little care from the uh, governments. So uh, I get a strong feeling that urban slum is created by backward of the rural area. So, so why they are important? You not only think that uh, uh, we are in the urban age, so the urban agenda is very important, but urban and the rural should put it together as one agenda, but uh, they are Two, three issues, urban development, rural development, and their corporations. That's my feeling. Thank, thank you. Thank Thanks. you, Samin. Uh, I'll pass on to Angela in Bogota. Yes, uh, I was thinking uh, how to say that, that, but I think that if we want to face the new challenges, and particular with these issues uh, related to COVID-19, I think we need to work more in, in to introduce rural urban linkages as an opportunity to face uh, the new conditions uh, we are facing in, in this. In the, more people want to live in rural zones, but if we want to, to maintain connections, development, we need to work uh, uh, providing rural zones more uh, infrastructure, more op uh, options to connections and options for education and uh, health. So it is necessary that, for example, we work in how to introduce that in a real and practical way. In, in some uh, um, territories, it's very complicated to think on that. Uh, and, and, and it is important to consider the difference between territories, the kind of, of production, how the agriculture uh, play 
plays a, a role in terms of incomes and how are the connection between urban uh, spots and the territories around the spots. So uh, this is my last reflection. Uh, I, am, I am sure that a way to, to face territorial inequality and reduce rural poverty is introducing urban rural linkages as a big concern in political decisions. And it is important to work with uh, local authority, authorities, but also with the national authority. It is important to change the way how we allocate budgets, how we were, uh, work with sectors, particularly with health, education, and uh, agriculture. In my country, that is very, very complicated because, for example, livelihood ministry only thinks in terms of urban zones. Mm -hmm. And we need to that this kind of ministry think not only in terms of agglomeration, uh, but also in providing services to rural zones. And uh, uh, we were working in a concept that rural people, rural inhabitants are citizens. And uh, we need to assure their rights and a way to work on that is working in urban rural linkages. Thank you, thank you, Angela. Um, Remy, you, um, you have the next word. Please be brief though, because we, we have to close soon, uh, but um, I, I, would, I would wish we had time to go on, but please, Remy. Yeah, sure, thanks a lot. I think um, great words, I like just the key words to go through. Yes, opportunities. Uh, um, Hello. Opportunities, including to reduce poverty. I don't know if you are hearing me, but I have just key key things, key tech, um, four takeaways. The first is that really urban ruling gauges can be summarized as people, place, and politics. People, because it's all about people. Places, because it's about the continuum, the territory you have heard. It's about politics, about, because it's about will, it's about power, it's about the relationship that we have, when we put that together, if that, that combination works, then uh, we, we get a start making a difference. The second message is that, yes, it's about equity, it's about ecology, it's about economy. The three E's, it makes sense, it, it, there's no better um, articulation than when you think territory, when you think urban rural linkages. That's the second message. The third one, partnership collaboration is key. If we don't start talking to our neighbors and those who have not reached out before, we are not gonna get out of our cocoon. The same thing we are talking about dividing urban rural. If you cannot reach out to others, then we are not doing justice. You cannot serve urban rural entities. So partner, open, open up your, your territory. That's the third one. The last one, there's no excuse not to do urban rural entities. There are examples. We are not here to demonstrate that it works. I, I told you through my present, up to the COVID today, that urban rural have been the single thing that makes, that, yeah, that shows that it's real. So example are there, tools are there. We have heard from Colombia, from China, everywhere, it's working. So we have to stop making excuses and start acting, start making a difference. So that's what I had to say. Thank As you. Take away. As you say, I'm always passionate about this. I, I truly believe in this topic, and I think this is the way we should go. Thank Over you, Remy. You, Thank you very much, Remy. Uh, Hannes, a very brief uh, takeaway from you. Yes, I keep it short. Um, I think um, today's um, um, conference um, shows it very well. I think, first of all, in order to, to really face effectively um, global sustainability challenges and the urban-rural interface, we need to develop um, a kind of common language. So um, a, a language that bridges not only regions globally, but also sectoral bound or bridges also sectoral boundaries and bridges disciplines um, horizontally, but also vertically. And um, I think um, we in the everyday research, in the research project, we face this um, every, every day. Um, so to really, um, um, if we talk about um, the urban-rural interface, if we talk about um, these linkages from different disciplinary angles, it's so important to, to, 
to give them um, or to, to raise awareness of these um, um, yeah, different understandings and um, um, to develop a, a common language. And this is mainly also what we aim with the, with the URA project, I think, um, with the integrated um, Raumbild strategy from a very um, yeah, planning perspective to really bring together different stakeholders, different actors um, in a, um, yeah, a more or less participatory way and to develop a sort of common language on, on a common understanding of how urban rural linkages, how, ur how urban regions in the Taicho um, case um, could develop um, in the future. Thank you, Hannes. And, and this is exactly what uh, also the second session tomorrow uh, will be about, the strategic tools for planning and governance. So please join us again uh, tomorrow, or uh, I don't really dare to guess what time it would be for Angela um, or for um, uh, Gui Ching. So um, tomorrow, uh, Central European time, um, 11 a.m., uh, we will hopefully see you again. Uh, for the second session and then at one o'clock for the third session looking again at um, spatial interventions and techniques. So we become much more practical, um, again have um, a multi multiplicity of different experiences from different geographical regions um, and I think uh, really enjoyed uh, today's uh, uh, first discussion. Thank you all for joining us, contributing. Um, stay with us please in this project um, for the next few years um, and uh, uh, yeah, thanks. And thanks also uh, really to everybody here in this room, a uh, wonderful technical team who made this possible across different time zones with simultaneous translation with absolutely no um, uh, um, uh, 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 rupture this afternoon. So thank you so much. Um, and um, I'll close for today. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.